Welcome to EXP's Express Notes concerning SEMA P3 performance strategy. Today we will look at uh, some issues concerning the review and audit of control systems within a uh, company or business organization. Now we have uh, discussed in uh, previous um, uh, presentations the importance of an enterprise risk management system within a company and of course a set of internal controls that should govern across the company and of course everything under the umbrella of a sound system of corporate governance which is um, effectively implemented and supervised by, um, by at the level of the board of directors. Of course management has a, has a direct and important hand in uh, implementation and making sure that the uh, controls are effectively um, performed. Now, in terms of terminology, let's just uh, focus in on internal auditing here. The IIA, they define internal auditing as being here the key characteristics, independent, uh, providing objective assurance and even a consulting activity with the objective of adding value to an organization's um, operations. In other words, you could see internal audit as being kind of a, uh, a team of specialists who are always on the go through the, uh, through the company uh, as kind of roving internal consultants who are looking at the, uh, at the systems and the processes in the company with a view to identifying weaknesses in those uh, systems to see if they are working properly, but also the Internal audit is, is very well aware of what the company's objectives are, and therefore this is why they should be interested also in uh, hoping in, in, in seeking to improve, for example, the efficiency of the company's uh, processes and the way in which it carries out or conducts its business so that it's in the best uh, position to be able to fulfill its business objectives. Um, so accomplishing these objectives, that's a great um, sort of contribution or, or, or assistance which is provided by internal auditing. Uh, it brings a systematic disciplined approach to, to, these, uh, to these investigations, so it's a very highly skilled, uh, highly qualified um, group of people who, who carry it out. Now, just to make clear one uh, basic, um, or the basic differences between internal and external auditing. Now we can just start on the uh, visible differences and that is of course the internal auditors are um, employees of the company whereas external auditors are of course uh, employees of external audit firms that are uh, engaged by a company to audit its financial statements. That leads us to another uh, uh, important difference um, and that is, while the external auditors are auditing the financial statements of a company, the internal auditors have actually a broader brief because they are looking at the uh, sum total of internal control systems, uh, IT systems, the robustness of systems and so on, the operations, the efficiencies within the company, as, as would consultants, which is uh, an important uh, way of contrasting what internal audit uh, is, is focused on doing uh, in contrast to the external auditors. Of course, both internal and external auditors are usually interested in making sure that the company's internal control systems are effective. And of course, there is a degree of uh, dialogue, a strong degree of dialogue that has to take place between internal and external auditors. So a mutual sharing of observations and, uh, uh, and, and, and suggestions so that the company benefits, of course, from the efforts of both uh, sides. To a certain degree, if there is a good level of professional cooperation and respect, between uh, internal and external auditors, 
Then, of course, the uh, results of uh, testing that goes on on a regular basis by the internal audit can be shared with the external auditors. They have to be, of course, careful to uh, protect their independence, and they cannot simply be, um, in a sense, insourcing or, or uh, delegating their responsibility to the internal auditors to perform uh, the sorts of functions that they themselves should be carrying out. So one has to keep this in mind. Of course, it goes without saying that the external auditors are also assessing, among the other things, the uh, qualifications and the competence of the internal auditors, because the internal auditors are an important part of the overall uh, systems that are operating within a company. Uh, in terms of scope, approach and responsibility, one can see here the internal auditors are oriented towards management, whereas the external auditors following uh, regulations and effectively uh, working on behalf of shareholders. And the corporate governance provisions that guide or um, address internal audit uh, mention that the internal audit head should be appointed by and should have a reporting line to the audit committee on the board. The audit committee, of course, is also very much involved in determining the priorities of the work of the internal audit to make sure that they are focusing on relevant and important uh, aspects of the company's operations. Um, areas of focus, here are some typical areas. Um, the internal auditors may look at value for money audits, value for money to make sure that operations are uh, or business units are properly um, working functioning according to the so-called three E's, these being economy, the, the economies are being, are being uh, recognized and achieved, that efficiencies are also being realized at the company, and of course that the business units are being effect effective in carrying out their business objectives. Now, internal audits, as we mentioned before, is a very specialized area, very highly qualified, and therefore they will carry out systems and IT audits. Of course, they're also making sure that the integrity of the financial statements and financial reporting is achieved, and they will carry out numerous operational audits as well within the company. Finally, one sees here the uh, typical audit steps that, are, that would be followed in uh, testing internal control systems. Starting with step one of ascertaining details of the system, these are done through interviews, uh, recording, having uh, notes that record uh, flow charts that provide details of the systems, and then confirming the details by so-called walkthrough test, evaluating client systems, in other words, assessing the systems for soundness or robustness, uh, testing the systems, and then assessing the results of tests of control. So these are all typical steps that the uh, audit steps that need to be um, carried out. And then, of course, a program, finally, of substantive testing of the system, which is under review. Thank you.